right, so let's talk about some more mini movie reviews, and I'm sorry about my hair. It is a mess, and I know. Um, but let's talk about some movies I watched. And let's start with uh, the first one I watched, which is 10 Things I Hate About You. Um, obviously, this is what a lot of people would consider a classic uh, teen comedy from the 90s. Um, this was a touchstone movie, so it's kind of like a little bit more raunchy, basically. You know, if you don't know, like, Disney's, uh, label for more adult films back in the 90s was, like, touchstone. So they would, re they would release movies like this, so there's a lot of, like, sex jokes in here and stuff that you wouldn't see in a normal Disney movie, uh, which I think is bullshit. Don't, you know, if you made the movie, put your name on it. That's just my opinion. But anyways, I watched this movie. Um, keep in mind, this is the first time I've seen this movie. Um, I've heard things about it. People love it. And some of y'all might really disagree with my opinion on this movie. Because some of you all have grown up on this movie. Uh, I was born 2003. So I wasn't alive in the 90s when this movie came out. So just bear with me when I say I didn't really enjoy this movie that much. Uh, it wasn't a bad movie at all. I definitely could you know rewatch it again and be fine though i don't know if i really will if you're watching it basically this movie is uh okay so the concept of this movie is there's this dad who's overprotective of his daughters uh he has two older daughters and one of them refuses to date the other one is boy crazy and she just wants to date you know and so to get her to be able to go out with this, this guy wants to go out with her. So he has to get his sister to go out with someone. So they pay this guy to go out with this girl and, and through various circumstances, they end up falling in love. And that's kind of the movie. My issue with that plot is there's two, there's two girls in this movie, right? There's the main girl and this character right here. Uh, you know, so they their chemistry and their like relationship in the movie is the main focus of the movie and i think that part of the movie works fine and it works really good and i enjoyed their chemistry uh especially seeing heath ledger in a non-joker role right that's kind of neat uh because you know now we know him as you know the joker in the dark knight and stuff but we don't you know that's not really what this is um that was fun, right? I enjoyed that. The other relationship is this girl who's kind of like the snobbish pretty girl, uh, you know, who doesn't really, it's kind of selfish and stuff and really doesn't have much compensation for her actions. Like there's one scene where the boy calls her, calls her out and then she just makes out with him and everything's fine. There's no, I'm sorry or whatever. And then she learns to be better. It's really her part of the story should have been cut out because really the whole point of this movie is this girl right here uh this relationship with her dad and her and her getting ready to move on to college and stuff and the dad learning to let her go and her falling in love with this guy who she doesn't really like very much it could just been a movie where she went out with this guy let's, let's say like let's say how i would have switched up this movie is I would have made this guy here. I would have made it a bet. Right? So let's say this guy is really, you know, he, this isn't the type of girl he would ever go out with. So he bets with some friends and, hey, you got to go ask her out. She's not really interested in him, but she'll just do it just to, just for shits and giggles. She goes out with him. And then, it, you know, they just kind of start hitting it off and slowly throughout the movie, that's the movie, Right? I feel like that would have worked better and then this concept with this other relationship because it just doesn't work. Also, I'll be honest, the soundtrack was dated. Like, there are some good songs in here that still hold up and are obvious classics. Like, when they say, can't take my eyes off of you. And that's a great song. But some of these other ones in here are just like, they're dated songs. They're not really like... I don't know, it felt very 90s watching this movie. And some people will love that uh especially if you grew up on this movie right because you you want to recapture that feeling of when you were a kid and you see you, know, you enjoy that aspect but i think for this movie you know this is one of those times where something feels reminiscent of a different time period and it's it do, not in a good way it feels bad <laughs> well 
well, I don't say, I don't want to say bad, but, you know, just kind of, eh. Um, so, overall, I think it's an okay watch, and I think, you know, it's definitely worth watching, uh, because it, it's enjoyable and fun, but it's not, like, one of my, I don't think it's one of the classic teen comedies. Like, you know, a lot of the John Hughes stuffs uh, are really good, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, all that, uh, Breakfast Club, a lot of those, are, I think, are major, major classics that still hold up, and I love them. This one, not so much. I, I think this one was just kind of, like, fun enough, but a little bit dated, and it had some questionable plot elements to it. I kind of talked about more about that movie than I expected. I was did not expect that, but let's talk about this one. Uh, L.A. Story. This is a Steve Martin uh, movie from the 90s, um, which I really had uh, not, never really heard of this movie before it was released on Blu-ray because uh, there was a DVD that came out for this movie back in 2006, and that was it for this movie. This movie kind of disappeared off the radar for a while. And when this was released on Blu-ray, and I saw this up for pre-order, I assumed this was a like a newer Steve Martin movie that he was in or something. I didn't know that this was a movie from the 90s until I started seeing people pick it up. And I was like, oh, I should get that. So I added it to my Amazon wish list, and then uh, I asked for it for Christmas. I actually got it for Christmas, and I finally sat down to watch it. So what did I think of this L.A. story? Um, I thought it was really good. First of all, what I really love about this movie is it's so diverse in its sense of humor. Now, it's very much like a, a normal, like, Steve Martin comedy movie, but there's also, like, the fact that there's visual gags in this movie that are insanely funny. There's a slapstick in this movie that's insanely funny. There's verbal comedy that's insanely funny. Just so many different types of comedy that you wouldn't think would mix very well in a movie. And I don't think I've ever seen a movie really mix these kinds of styles of comedies. I'm sure there's other ones that I'm not thinking of, but I can't really think of it. It was like beautiful the way they mended these things of the comedy. But I think that I think what also amazed me about this movie is, you know, I expected a Steve Martin comedy. You know, I know movies like Roxanne, other things like that, you know, movies with him that I enjoy. Um, I kind of was watching it expecting more of like, you know, the normal classic Steve Martin type stuff. But I, I didn't expect this deeper heart to this movie. Basically, this movie is Steve Martin's love letter to L.A. And like it really it verses itself within the culture of L.A. and the atmosphere and the tone of it. And it felt like I was transported to L.A. like just watching this movie, you know, the kind of myth the legend of LA and Hollywood and that type of thing. And that was kind of like beautiful. You know, it kind of felt like La La Land to me. Like I absolutely adore La La Land. I actually pre-ordered that 4K steelbook unboxing coming uh, when that, whenever that shows up. But, you know, it kind of felt like that. It's, you know, La La Land's obviously a very different approach to that. And they're not the same type of movie. But it felt like that kind of same atmosphere and tone and vibe to it. And I really was sucked in by it, and I was surprised by that. I really loved this movie. Um, I don't know how many times I'm going to rewatch it, but I was definitely like, this was this was a special movie, and I really appreciated with it, and I think this is a movie that, you know, I'm watching it 30 years later, and I'm really getting a lot out of it, which I appreciated. Then I watched the two uh, direct-to-video American Tale sequels. Uh, in the last video, you know, I mentioned I watched American Tell and Five Will Goes West. Uh, these are the, the first one and the second one. These are both theatrically released films. And they're excellent. You, If you haven't seen them, you should definitely watch them. They're great. I absolutely adore them. Well, well at least the first one's excellent. I'm, the sequel, not so much, but I kind of get some enjoyment out of it. And I think you should watch the sequel. Uh, if you kind of just ignore it's an American Tale movie, I think it works. These two, on the other hand... Um, so, I bought these off of Grub because they were $4 a piece, and I wanted to, like, I knew I was going to buy those, the first two on Blu-ray, so I wanted, like, a complete set, why not? So, I bought these, and I was just like, alright, I'll watch them, because I watched the other two, might as well watch these. I didn't uh, hate them as much as I expected, because 
I they're not like as bad as the Land Before Time sequels. I actually feel like these feel like somewhat natural continuations of American Tale. If you had to make direct videos sequels, but that's kind of where I draw the line. That's if you had to make direct to video sequels. Considering what this is, direct to video sequels to American Tale, it's not as bad as it could have been, but it's still not good. They very much still feel like direct to video sequels. The pacing in these movies is horrible. The animation at times is just absolutely terrible. Um, most of the time it looks fine, but there are just moments you're just like, yeah, this is clearly not made with very much money. And it, I'm not even like comparing it to the first movie at that point. I'm like watching these, understanding the direct to video movies and they had lower budgets. But just watching it, you're just like, ugh. So it's just, yeah, I didn't enjoy these. The stories weren't interesting. Um, I just, to me, it feels like American Tale was just a movie that should have never had a sequel. Not because necessarily you couldn't make a good sequel, I think you could. But it's very much a story that's about immigrants coming to this country and, and that kind of atmosphere. And so it's it's kind of a one-time movie that has a sincere message and heart to it. And then you make these sequels. And they kind of just like, they want to be normal kids affair, you know. Uh, like Five Will Goes West wants to be your average type of kids movie. And then these want to be your average direct video kids movie. But that's not what American Tale is. American Tale has deeper theming and messaging to it that I think is interesting. And it's unfortunate that that was thrown away for these. I didn't hate these and I won't, but I won't ever watch them again. And I only recommend them if you're just really super curious and you feel like you have to watch them. Otherwise just don't even bother. These are not good.